Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. I'm Jeffy. Please don't copyright strike us. I have no idea who these people are with this puppet. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Jeffy. Thanks, Jeffy. You rock. Thanks, Jeffy. <laughs> Check out his link down below, because now I'm going to have to give him a shout out. I have no the fucking clue who Jeffy is, but what is it? What is he's got a Mario Lamborghini. S he's got a Mario Lamborghini. S Look, S N M. Look up S N M. Jeffy. I've looked up them letters before, and I got different results. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't. Is it SNM or SML? That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're talking Cinderella, and we're talking Still Climbing. If you ain't watched previous videos, go check those out. Uh, here's our current rankings. We are... Yeah, we got. We still got two, two same top ones, so... Mm-hmm. We're talking still climbing. <coughs> um, who wants to start this one off? I do. I'll start. I'll start this one off. This album was the one that did it in for me. It, it, it was a very. It was just a total disappointment. And uh, I listened to it twice, and I haven't been able to listen to it since. And that was years ago. Um, I just and this was after a, a what a six year break, wasn't it? Four years. Four, four, four years. years. It, was, it was a four year break, but it was a necessary four year break. It was a necessary because of Tom's voice, yeah, yeah, and, and it was an important one because of uh, a little band called Nirvana, and yeah. their grunge rock came in and completely changed the way people purchased music. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, I mean, this is the uh, same year as Weezer's Blue Album, Blue Green album. Day's Dookie, Offspring Smash. Yeah. This is the year punk actually broke. Yeah, that's true. I was saying, 94 is the year the punk actually died. We'll get to 94, motherfucker, in the meantime. <laughs> we'll get that's to right. it. We'll get to 94. Yes, we will. <laughs> All right, so, so you, this is the album that did it in for you. Oh. No boy, no. Did you did you revisit this when like recently for the discography for the video or did yes you... I did I listened to it the other day and nothing and uh, it's just <sighs> I probably should give it more time really I just you you know how I am I'm I'm stubborn and and when I'm stuck on something I'm stuck on it so uh I just. Long Cold Winter, it's hard to top that album for me. And it's not just for nostalgic sake, because of my brother. I listened to these this, this band long long after, you know, and, and no connection with my brother, but it, at the same time, it, uh, they started getting more and more bluesy and stuff. And it, it's not that I don't like blues, but I don't know, I was... You wanted that eighties sound uh, that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to that. My ear my ears uh kind of mess me up. <laughs> Hold me back per se. Yeah, I mean well, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Nostalgia yeah. is a hell of a drug. Yeah, it is. I think I think Bill should follow up because he wasn't even born. Were you born in 94? No, sir. So, he wasn't even alive, so. You wasn't alive in 94. No, I was No not. nostalgia. How old are you? You're. I, I made it in the 90s by about one foot in the door. Oh, you're 99. Not, no, 98, so. 98? Oh, so, so you I graduated high school. My daughter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's why it's good to have him on the show because he has a different perspective than. Yeah. That's right. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I mean, with everything, 
for the most part, most of these bands, I mean, all these albums came out before I was born. I could only hear this stuff after the fact. All sure. Right. Yeah. Which is um, a good barometer of if it actually stands the test of time or not. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. This album compared to the other three, I didn't have that much exposure to. Um, actually, prior to doing the full discography. That being said, it it was interesting. Um, let's see the transition because this one went really blues rock. They they abandoned the country, which I think was good for them to do. Which I think most people would agree would be good for them to do. And they went back into that real heavier sounding blues rock. And I think it worked for them actually in this album. I might be in the minority on this. Um, but actually a couple of these songs I really like and I thought are actually some top song contenders. Um, I really like Talk is Cheap, Blood from a Stone. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Hot and Bothered was all right. Rolled Still Long I thought was good, but it was a damn long song. <laughs> um, and actually, I thought Bad Attitude Shuffle a pretty damn good opener. That being said, though, I'll say this. Compared to every other album, this one... This album's lowest point, but the last two, was definitely higher than the last two albums. The highest point wasn't as high as some of the points in the last two albums, though, either. So, this one was a more, not monochromatic, but, you know, it was more level-lined. You know, I could sit, start this album, play it through the whole way. And I would not have issue with it. Compared to some of the other albums, yeah, there's a couple songs I would skip. Okay, so yeah, yeah it's... Yeah. Huh. I mean, that's pretty similar to my notes, actually. Um, so we've been talking about it throughout the whole discography. I think this one has the best combo opening closer. Both very strong songs. Um and then, yeah, like you said, Talk is Cheap is really good. Uh, Blood from a Stone is really good. Freewheeling has got that driving deep purple. We're driving 90 miles down a freeway feel to it. I liked that a lot. Almost like um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, um, interestingly enough, uh, Fred Curry doesn't play drums on this. They went with another studio drummer. This time they got Kenny Aronoff, who made his fame with uh, Johnny Cougar Melon Camp, and I think was in Smashing Pumpkins at one point. Uh, he, he did a lot of studio stuff in the '90s and earlier, and still does. I want to say great Fred drummer. Curry, didn't Fred Curry do Hot and Bother drums though? He did the he did the one okay. song, yes. That's what I thought, yeah, but yeah, the rest of it is Car- Kenny Aronoff. Which, that's interesting too, it's four years since the last album and they were only able to get one song with the drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But Kenny Aronoff is a great drummer and he does a great job on this album. So I found a lot of the drum parts were really interesting. And I'm also going to respect that unlike some other bands in this genre who reacted to the industry change and Nirvana and all of that good stuff by, you know, trying to put out like a techno album or an industrial album or a grunge album. Cinderella didn't it. They just kept doing what they do, which is that ACDC Rolling Stones blues based rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And another self-produced album. This one sounds really good. Like, yeah, it sounds really good for 1994. Um, no real money was put into this. There was no advertising for this. 
No, um, no. For the people who yeah, were alive I, in '94, I, I didn't even know this even came out. Yeah, so no one knew this you know. came out. Um, yeah, it's got some seriously good songs on it. Uh, it, it. There's nothing new. They're still doing what they do, um, and have done for the last arguably two albums, but possibly all three. Um, yeah. Uh, th- this one was a lot better than I expected going into it. I, you know, you got to wonder about those like, oh, crap, what are they? How are, are they going to go post grunge now? Or, you know, all of a sudden Cinderella is a death metal band or something. Who knows? I um, mean, so that's something with all any band, especially these hair metal bands that we've talked about, like going from the 80s into that 90s, like, okay. Uh, how we shift in here because you're gonna shift probably slightly some way which i mean and and they all did real, it. yeah they real shift they shifted to blues rock which i feel like w- it worked for them when they actually went blues rock not country but blues rock yeah sure yeah no the 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 blues rock is definitely a stronger point than the country rock yeah um and this one has a couple country rock songs like the road's still long um, at first, I thought it was free falling, but then it kind of kicked in. And I went, no, it's just kind of a basic country song. Wait, wait, um, wait, but wait. It, but wait. it does have a nice little groove to it. Like, you can sit back and enjoy that one. So, What, what song did you say was like Tom Petty? Uh, the Road's Still Long. Go back and listen to that intro. It's free falling. And then I also wanted to throw out, I think it was Talk is Cheap does sound like nothing else in the discography that's the one where it feels like they're really trying to maybe sound modern um and i think it works so um i thought that was a really good song so so that's something so when i was initially looking up because actually talk is cheap and free wheel and were actually initially done at that rock club back in 85 oh shit. So those okay. are so actually they... some og songs coming out on this sure. album sure sure Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, bands do that too. But it's good. It seemed like they, when I was just looking stuff up, it's, they changed the tempo a little bit and they made it a little bit longer duration, which live versus a studio album absolutely makes sense to do those changes. Exactly. And then, yeah, when you're dealing with a, what I guess, a 10 year evolution of the song, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to, it's going to finesse for sure. Those are all very interesting points. Jason's going to tell us how much this album sucks. Um, I'll go on record <laughs> saying this is probably their best album cover. I think that's a good album cover. It's got yeah, the I mean, maze. It's got the ladder still climbing. It fits the theme of the title of the record. It does look very like Matchbox 20 Wallflowers for the time. Like It looks like 94. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's a good album cover. I mean, compared to their own album covers, yes. right? They weren't. They didn't have the we're best not album covers. It too much. Yeah, Long Cold Winter is easily the the, the worst, cheapest album yeah, cover that's... we've seen in a while. Like, who the Bring fuck you think you are, art. fucking Queen? Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, actually, a lot of the shit y'all said, I agree with. Um, bad ad, except for Tim's opening and closing tracks bad attitude shuffle it's another strong opening track it's bluesy it's pretty rocking once it kicks in i see we have dollar store sorry five dollar below axle back whatever the music's pretty cool it's pretty aerosmith sounding um all comes down we got that sax going again it's still kind of generic bar blues rock though but i'm okay with that like you know it has its place. Yeah. Talk is cheap. Oh, shit. They have a bass player. <laughs> this is the first song, besides that funky wah-wah bullshit they did on that one, <laughs> that anybody has even talked about the bass. Um, it was like, okay, they're trying some things here. Got some panning vocals and a unique vocal melody. Still cheesy lyrics, but at least it was interesting musically. Hard to find the words. Holy shit, tell me you did not go immediately to Freebird on that intro. It's 50% Freebird, 
45% Simple Man and 5% Country Twain. Just for that, I'll give this one a thumbs up. Top song contender. Uh, Blood from a My Stone. My mentioned the stones. Yeah, I mean, that's not a far, not a far oh, reach. Geez. Yeah. I kind of like Blood as well. It was more interesting than anything on the back half of Heartbreak. Still climbing. The title track was a little boring, but not offensive. Freewheeling fucking rocked. Not going to lie. This one was kicking ass right out the gate. Even the solo breakdown thing was cool. Through the Rain. I wish he would have sang this one in his lower range. It would have been a top song contender if he had. The Axel voice just killed it for me. Musically, it was super pretty. Great melody, especially the sometimes the sun shines through the rain part. Um, easy come. Not sure what is going on with the horns in the background. Sounding like long, wet farts throughout the song. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing interesting in the song was like the <laughs> horns they had going on. Um, the road's still long. The intro and main riff was Tom Petty's "Free Falling," minus the the fucking Aces chord at the end. You heard it too, yeah. The rest just sounded like some country rock shit. I did like the female backing vocals. I think they were done really well. I didn't mind this one overall. All overall, I mean, I like Tom Petty. I like "Free Falling." You know, I like the ding 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 ding, and there's no final note, but whatever. Right, uh, right. No hot and bothered. Thing. I swear they have used that same blues rock at least seven times in this discography. At least it didn't put me to sleep like the last album closer, so there's that. Horrible 80s hair metal lyrics throughout. Um, yeah, I mean, this was... For 1994, for what were, what was Poison doing and Def Leppard and... This is two yeah. years after Generalize. They, they were prepping slang at this point. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Poison <laughs> uh, was Native Tongue. They'd, native they'd Tongue. Know. Yeah, that was when they when CC wasn't in the band, and they brought in Richie Cutson. And they got kicked out of the band for uh, blues banging and, the drummer's wife. Yeah. There was there yeah. was some shit on this record that's like better than the Black Crows. I think they just got pigeonholed with that Cinderella 80s glam metal band mm -hmm. the industry the mainstream completely like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> they fucking they, they, the mainstream the Good industry stuff. just turned their backs on them and I think yeah. they, they started writing music that they wanted to write they wrote their you know well, what they grew up fair, on like, they were never the biggest band in the world, but I don't think there was a fan base for them in 94 either. This is no. More. Yeah. All those 80s people were raising babies not listening to music. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They were being responsible. The kids had already taken over with fucking good music. Yeah, they're being responsible and moving on to Matchbox 20. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Whose turn is it to guess? Tim? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put... Cowboy put it in fourth. Yep. Number four. Um, okay. Bill put it in... Third? Lost. Oh, fourth. Okay. I said... Close the other way too. Oh, second. Okay. Yes. Well, this, My natural inclination is to not think that you thought it was better. This, this <laughs> it was a gem to find for me. Okay. I can't believe I would have never guessed Bill's rankings. Uh, I think Jason is gonna put it third close but in the wrong direction second second <laughs> Love that song. i like oh, this I'm... record okay yeah and, and i'm gonna put it third we really hated that back half of heartbreak <laughs> go check out that video uh, yeah it all right well that has been our rankings for Cinderella. Um, I do want to read my final notes. It says, uh, what a fucking discography. 
They ended it the same way they started with some bad 80s shit as a closer. Overall, this one had some top song contenders. Besides the closing track, didn't sound like every other 80s hair metal band trying to survive in a post-grunge world. I think if they had a cooler name than Cinderella, they may have survived through the 90s. Um, Should have gone with a more Black Crows image. They ended higher than Def Leppard slang, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, yeah. You know, I think it was a it was a good closing album for the band. So that's why it's my number two. So color coding. Cowboy, as our special guest, give us your color coding. <laughs> what which which Cinderella <laughs> albums are your must hears? All right. Uh, let's see. Color code is what? Green is what? Must hear. Must hear. That would be Long Cold Winter. Must hear album. All right. And yellow is what? Caution. Like, Caution. like if you like maybe this, like you, it, might, you, you might, you might not. You know. Yeah. Heartbreak Station. Is yellow? Yeah. Skipping night songs. Uh, night songs would be definitely uh, green. You motherfucker, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> and red is probably still climbing. That's fucking bullshit. Red? The fact that there's a red on this discography is a goddamn crime. Well. All right. Well, what about you, Bill? Oh, straight green. Honestly, straight green, straight green. All of these. This was ten, this was Bill's pick. But no, there's so even that's like because all four of these. Honestly, long cold winter and heartbreak station could definitely flip flop for me. Um, but all these are they're all solid albums. I mean, it's a short discography. And in my opinion, Cinderella didn't put out necessarily a bad album. Did they have a bad half of an album? Yes. But they didn't have a bad album here. That's, right. that's a fair point. Yeah, there's no... However, I'm going to say they don't have a good album here either. I agree. There's a no effect song called Mediocre. And it comes to yeah, mind, yeah. yeah, with this discography. Like, while I think it's interesting, I I find the later half of their discography. I'll I'll just do my color coding real quick. I think, long hard night or long cold winter, whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> long and hard, long we're good, right? Long hard night. It's long and hard. Um, I think that's green because what, what year? What year did that come out? That came out in eighty eight. I think there's there's enough blues undertone and that that seventies rock where. They're not fully committed to the, the 80s glam pop that Def Leppard and Bon Jovi's and all the others did. There's enough of that there mixed in that it's interesting. Um, and I think that's fully realized on Still Climbing. I, I think that is, if you were to check out Cinderella, I would highly just suggest those two records. This is just my personal taste. If you like those two, I would say they're 80s glam metal where they're chasing a trend or the studio said, hey, whatever, you got to make a fucking living on a prayer or whatever. You know, you'll probably like it. And I think Heartbreak Station, that first half of that album is worth hearing. It's some of their best stuff, I think. But that back half is so bad. But... So I'm going to go with two greens, two yellows. Respectable. If, let me explain my colors. If, if you all were confined to this discography only, then oh, there's yeah. two greens, two yellows. 
if you're comparing it to their contemporaries and the years and other bands, then it would be all yellow. Like, it's not bad. It's not good. It's just there. Honestly, I, I could get behind that statement. Absolutely. <laughs> Tim? Yeah, I've been going about this all day. And you put it, you make some great arguments. Um, is this discography bad? I would say no. Like, if, if, if you like it, it's probably pretty good. So for that, I'll give number one a yellow. Based on how you approach that one, if you like the rest of it, then great. If you don't like the rest of it, um, like me, then I'm going to give the rest red. That's a lot of red. That's a lot of red. There's not a lot of variation here. It's not bad music. It's just not good it doesn't stand out it's very formulaic very simple Mm -hmm. most of the lyrics are very yeah you can hear the first line of a of a of a of a chorus and know what the next line is going to be without ever having here heard it Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. except for the living in a tree i didn't expect that (laughs) but it doesn't make it good but he did rhyme it with me and there's only so many choices you get yeah how many words rhyme with me there buddy right (laughs) let me see (laughs) let it be let it be let it be all right so only a couple slaps in this discography next week is alice in chains I'll be holding the slap button for that. <laughs> and I don't think anybody's going to get slapped on that one. I don't know, um, man. I don't know. We'll see about that. Uh, stick around. We're going to do our Cinderella's top songs. I'm very worried that Tim's going to steal two of mine. <laughs> I'm very worried you're going to steal two of mine. <laughs> Fuck. I better rearrange some shit and get them in early. <laughs> Uh, this is Bill's pick, so he gets to pick up, you know, who gets to go first and who gets to do the outro for our top songs. Because we like to start with a good opening track and end it with a good closing track. We like to give Cowboy a shout out for joining us again. Always. Um, Thank and, you for having me. And of course, what was his name? Jeffy. Jeffy. Oh, yeah, Jeffy. We're glad he's he was here too. He made a guest appearance. And be safe, make good decisions. 